Hello everyone, this is Mam Ma Amano and this lecture video is all about the chemical nomenclature part 2 in which we will tackle the naming system of acids, bases, and hydrates. Let us start. So first we have here the hydrates. We can define or identify hydrates as compounds that have a specific number of water molecules attached to them. For example, so this one is a compound and there is a water molecule on the chemical formula denoted by the dot at the middle. So when you see a dot at the middle, that means it's combined with the water. So that is what we mean by hydrates. It has a water molecules attached on a compound. That is a hydrates. From the term hydrates, it means water. Okay. So let us start. How do we name this one? First, name the compound. That is barium dichloride. It means two here, barium dichloride or just barium chloride. Since there is a two on the coefficient of the water molecule, then we will use the Greek prefix S, which is the stands for di. So the name of this compound is barium chloride dihydrate or barium dichloride dihydrate since we have here a two. But since there are no chemicals that have the same chemical formula with this one, uh, we name this as barium chloride dihydrate for simplicity. But if you want to be elaborate, that is barium dichloride dihydrate. And then another example we have here, lithium and then the chlorine. So we name this by first naming the compound, lithium, and then IDE, change the last letters of the chlorine into IDE, just like what I said on the previous lecture. So this one is lithium chloride. Then there is only one water molecule. So this one is lithium chloride monohydrate. And then this, how about this one? This is magnesium and SO4 is an anion. You can check this on your periodic table. The name of this one is sulfate. So this one is magnesium sulfate. Since this one is a seven uh, molecule of water, then therefore we will use a Greek prefix. Uh, magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. This one. Hepta stands for seven. And then the hydrate, the water molecule, then this one is the compound. Okay, how do we have this one, this chemical formula of uh, magnesium sulfate? Let me draw a board for you. So, the charge of magnesium is positive 2 and the charge of sulfate is negative 2. Okay, so cross multiplication or cross uh, exchange of charges. So, this one will be the subscript of the sulfate here, 2. And this one will become positive and will become the charge of the magnesium here. So since they have the same uh, subscript, cancel, cancel, uh, empirical formula or simply as form. So that is why you have this chemical formula, magnesium and sulfate. So what else? So as you can see, this magnesium sulfate is a type of ternary compound. We have three elements here, magnesium denoted by capital M, then sulfur, then oxygen. And this is the cation. And then the last two elements are the anion group. Okay. How about the water? How did we obtain the water molecule? Okay, so for example, we have here a hydrogen. The charge of hydrogen is a positive 1 and then the charge of the oxygen is negative 2. Interchange, subscript at 2 and then the 1 here. So that is why you have the H2O or water molecule or dihydrogen monoxide. How about this one? How do we name this one? On your periodic table, NO3 is nitrate. And the charge of the nitrate is uh, negative 1. Then we have here the strontium. The charge of strontium is positive 2. Exchange of charges, you now have the strontium nitrate or strontium dinitrate. Then we have here four molecules of water. That This is tetra from the Greek prefix tetrahydrate. So, the name is strontium dinitrate or strontium nitrate tetrahydrate, this one. Now, let us proceed on naming the bases. First, what is a base or what are bases? These are substances that yield hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. So, one of the key features of bases is that they have a hydroxide anion group attached on an element forming the compound. For example, so that when you put that in water, it will be dissolved and will be separated from the compound. So for example, these elements here, these are all bases because there are uh, hydroxide ions that is attached on the element or in the cation. So these are an ion group, the hydroxide. Okay, how do we name this one? Name the first element, then hydroxide. If there's only one hydroxide, you do not need to emphasize mono and that is understood. 
So, let us name this one. Uh, sodium hydroxide. That one. How about this one? This is potassium and then hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide. Then this one we have here barium dihydroxide. And since we do not have a uh, other chemical formula, the lowest chemical formula for barium is 2 since the charge of this is 2. So you can call this as barium hydroxide or just barium dihydroxide that is okay as well. Okay, so this one is barium dihydroxide. Then we have here tantalum and then hydroxide. We have here five uh, pieces of hydroxide because this tantalum have a five charge. Okay, so this one is tantalum pentahydroxide. That one. Okay, so just in case you got confused, how do we how did we obtain this chemical formula? We have here tantalum is a positive charge of five, and then hydroxide is negative one. So exchange of charges. Tantalum will be the subscript of the hydroxide, and that is 5. And then, that since that is more than 1, you will put parentheses here. And then, negative 1 here, that will be positive. So, that is why you have here the tantalum pentahydroxide as your chemical formula. Now, let us proceed on acids. So, acids are substances that yield hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. So, this contains hydrogen on the, uh, on the place of cation. So, the formulas for acids contain one or more hydrogen atoms as well as an anionic group. An ion whose name and in IDE form acids with a hydro prefix and an IC ending. For example, we have here hydrogen and then the chlorine. So, basically, in normal naming system, you will name this the, you will name the first element as hydrogen. And then, this one will be chloride, changing the I and E into IDE, the normal way. That is hydrogen chloride. But there are also other ways of naming that. You will change the chlorine into IC instead of IDE. And then we will contract this one into hydro and attach that on the chloric acid. The name of this one is hydrochloric acid. How did we obtain this chemical formula? We have here the, let me draw a board, hydrogen. The charge of hydrogen is positive and negative 1. Uh, since this hydrogen is placed at the beginning of the compound, then it forms the property of a cation. We will have the charge of positive 1. And then chlorine is in the anion group, so that is negative 1. The charge of chlorine is negative 1. Interchange of charges, you will have the HCl as the chemical formula. Another example, we have here hydrogen and then fluorine. So in a normal naming system, you will name or get the name of the first element, which is hydrogen. And then fluorine change the last uh, three letters into IDE. That will be fluoride. And another way of naming this one is by, instead of IDE, you will use IC and then acid. And then you will contract the hydrogen into hydro and then attach that on the fluoride. So this will be hydrofluoric acid. And how did we obtain this chemical formula? We have here the charge of the hydrogen is positive 1 since that is in the beginning of the compound and then the anion which is the fluorine is charged as negative 1 so interchange you will have the chemical formula of HF or hydrofluoric acid now we have here next are the oxo acids or acids that contain hydrogen oxygen and another central element okay meaning to say at the center they are placed at the center so you will have first the hydrogen and then the central element and then the oxygen. So for examples, we have here the carbonic acid, chloric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid, and sulfuric acid. Okay, so those are the examples of oxo acids having central element at the center, and then hydrogen at the beginning, and then oxygen at the end. So basically, these are your cations, and then the last two elements are anion groups. Okay, so how did we obtain this one? Just in case you got confused. So, the charge of the hydrogen is positive 1 since that is placed at the beginning of the compound. And then, the charge of the CO3 here or carbonate, look at your periodic table, the charge of that is uh, negative 2. Interchange of charges, interchange. So, this one will be the subscript of hydrogen here. And then, this one will be the subscript of the carbonate here. So, that is why you have the chemical formula of H2CO3. Now, another example, how about the chloric acid, this one? So, the charge of hydrogen is uh, positive 1, and then the chloride is negative 1. Ang charge, negative 1, wait. Okay, interchange of charges, that is why you have 
HClO3. Then for this one, we have here hydrogen and uh, that is positive 1. And then the NO3 or nitrate is charged as negative 1. So interchange of charges, you will have this chemical formula here. How about the phosphoric acid here? So the charge of the hydrogen is positive 1 since that is placed at the beginning. And then the phosphate or PO4 is charged as negative 3. Interchange of charges, you will have here the H, and then this one will be the subscript of this one, and then PO4 we will have the subscript of 1. So that is why you have the chemical formula of H3PO4. How about the sulfuric acid? This one here. So the charge of the hydrogen again is 1. Let me write that, 1. And then the sulfate is SO4. The charge of that is negative 2. Interchange of charges, the negative 2 here will be the subscript of hydrogen and then the 1 here will be the subscript of the sulfate. So that is why you have here the H2SO4, this one. Now let us proceed on the systematic naming of acids when you add and remove some elements. So I have here a table of the summary of the naming system of acids. Let us proceed. We have here the acid name, carbonic acid, chloric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid, and then the sulfuric acid. The acid formula we have here for this acid name, okay, let me enlarge this one. For carbonic acid, that is H2CO3, chloric acid, this is the formula, and then nitric acid, this one, phosphoric acid, this one, sulfuric acid, this one. Now, if you happen to add one oxygen atom to the ic acid, this is the ic acid, the name will be, you will have the prefix per and then followed by the ic acid. So, for example, I will add a... Uh, oxygen here and the carbonic acid so let me add so we have here the h2co4 already from three we added one oxygen we have here the h2co4 and then the name of that will be instead of carbonic acid we will have the per carbonic acid then another example so let us add one oxygen here from three let us add one so that will be four and the chemical formula will be hclo4 the chemical name will be, from chloric acid, will be perchloric acid. Okay? Another example, we have here the nitric acid. Let us add one oxygen here on the chemical formula. That will be HNO4. And the name of the acid will be per nitric acid. Whenever you add one oxygen, you will add a per on the prefix of this chemical name here. So that will be per nitric acid. Another example, we have here H3PO4. You just have to add one oxygen, for example, that will be H3PO5. And the name of the chemical formula from phosphoric acid will be per phosphoric acid. You will add per on the prefix indicating the addition of one oxygen. How about if we remove one oxygen atom from the ic acid here? We will remove one oxygen here in the ic acid since this is one that, that originates with IC pref uh, suffix rather. So, removing one oxygen atom here, for example, H2CO3, remove one oxygen, that will be H2CO2. And that is the chemical formula here. Then, the name of the compound will be carbonous acid. From the carbonic acid, it will have a suffix of OUS, so that will be carbonous acid. Another example, we have here from the ic acid, chloric acid, we will remove one oxygen that will be HClO2 and the chemical formula is HClO2. The chemical name will be chlorous acid since you remove uh, one oxygen here. Another example, we have here the nitric acid. Let us remove one oxygen atom that will be HNO3 and then the new chemical formula will be HNO2. Then the name of the compound from the ic acid will be Nitrous acid. Another example, we have here the phosphoric acid. We will remove one oxygen atom here. We will have uh, from H3PO4, the new chemical formula that we will have is H3PO3. We remove one oxygen. And then the name of the compound will be, from phosphoric acid, will be phosphorus acid. This one. Okay. How about another table here? We have, what will happen if you remove two oxygen atoms from the ic acid instead of one, instead of just one, we will remove two. And we will have here the another naming system. Again, this is the ic acid. 
okay the original one so we will remove two oxygen from the chemical formula here from h2co3 we will have just the h2co 3 minus 2 that is 1 and you don't need to write the 1 uh, because it is understood that an oxygen without a subscript is have a 1 oxygen Removing two oxygen atoms, the new chemical formula we will have here is H2CO. And the new chemical name from carbonic acid will be hypocarbonous acid. We will add hypo at the prefix and then we will change the last letters into OUS. You will have here the hypocarbonous acid. Then we also have here the chloric acid. This one that is HClO3. We will remove two oxygen atoms. That will be HClO. This one. And the new chemical name from chloric acid will be hypochlorous acid. We will add hypo and then change the last uh, letters into OUS. You will have hypochlorous acid. Next, another example. We have here the nitric acid, which has the chemical formula of HNO3. Removing two oxygen atoms, you will have HNO. So, from HNO... This is the chemical formula now. And the name of the compound from nitric acid will be hyponitrous acid. Another example we have here, the phosphoric acid minus two hydrogen atoms. We will have H3PO2 as a new chemical formula. And then the new chemical name from phosphoric acid, we will have here the hypophosphorus acid. This one. How about when we remove all the hydrogen ions? in the ic acid so when that happens you will change the anion name into ate when you remove the hydrogen ions all the hydrogen ions so for example we have here the carbonic acid we will remove the hydrogen you will be left out with the chemical formula of co3 and then from co3 you will have the new chemical name of carbonate instead of carbonic you wouldn't put an acid uh, on the suffix or in the ending because we already removed the hydrogen. Again, the definition of acid is something that has a hydrogen ion and we removed that already. So you do not need to put a hydrogen or an acid on the name of the carbonate. Just carbonate is enough. Another example we have here, the chloric acid. The chloric acid, we will removing all the hydrogen atoms. You will be left out with the chemical formula of ClO3. This one. And the new chemical name will be chlorate. Okay. Again, you do not need to put an acid on the ending of the name because we do not have any more or we already removed the hydrogen ions. Next, another example, we have here the nitric acid. HNO3, removing all the hydrogen. That will be nitrate. Another example, we have here the phosphoric acid, removing all the hydrogen atoms. You will be left out with the PO4 or phosphate or phosphorate. That is the same. Just uh, kinontrak lang. So how about when all the hydrogen ions are removed in the OUS acid? It will have now a suffix of ITE. So this is our OUS acid. From here, removing all the hydrogen here, you will have CO2 as your chemical formula, the new chemical formula. And then the name will be Carbide. Next example, from the OUS acid, we have here the chlorous acid. Removing all the hydrogen atoms, you will have the new chemical formula of ClO2. And the new chemical name will be chlorite. Instead of chlorus, you will change the last letters into ITE. And then we have here the nitrous acid. Removing all the hydrogen atoms, we will have an NO2. And the new chemical name will be nitrite. Another example, we have here the phosphorus acid, removing all the hydrogen atoms, you will have the PO3 as your new chemical formula, and the new chemical name will be phosphorite or phosphite. Now, as your quiz, I want you to answer this part here, this one, the sulfuric acid, answer all of that, uh, given the conditions here. This is your quiz, and you will submit this to me along with your note-taking activity. Uh, deadline is, of course, Saturday, 5 p.m. So, that is all for the naming of acids, bases, and hydrates.